TNC back again with another video, bro. If you're watching this bus again, <laughs> well, only me and you are at the premiere that I have planned right now. Thank you, and I will be with you in the chat watching this video as well for all of us to come together, relax, grab your snacks, as always. Now, before we hop into this video, I don't have no snacks myself. I don't feel like going out. You know, chowing down on some chocolates because, you know, I don't really care for too much chocolate. But, it don't mean that you should have any snacks. Bro, y'all let me down in the comments below what y'all snacking on in this video, man. Shoot for five likes on the video once again. Do it, or you guys can do it. Without further ado, let's get it. Popular during the quarantine phase of 2020, and I still regret making that one Zoom call that ruined four lives. Ooh. I'm a 45-year-old housewife living in Montana. After the lockdown got declared, we all got locked up in our houses. But to pass the time, I often talked to my friends using Zoom. Mm -hmm. Every night after dinner, we connected through a Zoom call and chatted for at least an hour or so. My son was studying in Australia and my husband died in a car accident oh. 10 years back. So I've been living alone for quite some time now. My friend Joanna lived with her old mother. She didn't marry. And my other friend, Molly, lived with her husband. We talked about our daily life, mostly. Joanna Suddenly, looking. Joanna's mom passed away. One morning, Molly called me and gave me the bad news. It was painful for all of us, because Joanne is now completely alone. And this time, she badly needed us to be there for her. But we were unable to see her for obvious reasons. The only option was to connect her through a Zoom call. But as the week passed... Joanna became more and more depressed. Whenever we called her, she hardly talked. She just sat in front of the screen with a sad face. Molly and I tried to cheer her up. We even planned to take a trip once the lockdown was lifted, but Joanna didn't show any excitement. Molly often told me, Give her some time, Ivy. She'll be fine. There was nothing else I could do at that moment, so I waited for Joanna to float back to life. I realized that it would take some time, but didn't know the change would occur so fast and unexpectedly. Joanna suddenly stopped attending our Zoom calls, oh, or Lord. any calls for that matter. She completely disappeared from our lives, cutting all ties. Molly and I called her neighbor, Mr. Cromwell. He said, Joanna hardly comes out of her house. No, about Joanna. Around one o'clock in the afternoon, Molly finally called me. I picked it up immediately and heard her voice from the other side. Ivy, Mr. Cromwell is on the line with us. Hello? Mr. Cromwell? Did you see her today? How is she? Hey guys, I just came from Joanna's house. She's not the same person anymore. I know Mr. Cromwell. Lately, she's been going through a lot. Molly and I keep calling her, but she never picks up our call. Don't know what went... No, no. You don't understand, Ivy. Joanna looked completely fine at first. She was smiling, but then she told me something that freaked me out. Why? What did she say to you? Molly asked. She told me to come in and have a slice of her mother's freshly baked plum cake. What? But her mother... Exactly. I think she's having trouble believing that her mother is no more. You all should call someone to take care of her. Whatever Mr. Cromwell said in the call shocked Molly and me to the core. I called Joanna right away. I made up my mind that if this time she didn't pick up the call, I would drive to her house. But thankfully, she did pick up this time. Hello, Ivy. How are you? Joanna? What the Where are frick? you? You didn't pick up our calls or even talk to us for the last few weeks. Are you alright? You don't have to worry about me. I'm completely fine now. See you guys at the Zoom call tonight. She disconnected the phone call before I could say anything. But one thing I was happy about is the upcoming Zoom call. I informed Molly that Joanna will be joining us again tonight. She became excited too. We decided to confront Joanna about her health at the video call. That night I finished dinner early. Molly's husband was out on a business trip, so we connected on the video call early that day. Molly texted the Zoom call link to Joanna, and we waited for her to join the call. Molly and I were talking casually until Joanna came in. Mm -hmm. When she arrived, we were shocked to see our friend as soon as her video flashed on the screen. 
Joanna was sitting in a dark room. The lights were turned off, but the room was filled with candlelight. What it seemed very heck? spooky and uncomfortable to me. What have you done to your room, Joanna? Oh, goodness, no, Ivy. This isn't my room. This is Mom's room. I sleep here from now on. Molly said in Bro. a worried voice. But why, Joe? I know you feel lonely, but you have to move forward with your life. This isn't the way to... But why would I be alone? I could see a weird look in Joanna's eyes, as if Molly had said something absurd. What do you mean? Joanna, darling, we all miss your mother terribly. She was the nicest mother one could have, but you have to accept the truth. She's no more, Joe. What are you saying, Ivy? My mom's not dead. She's right here with me. Yes, I, I know. She will always be with you, watching over you, Joanna. Please, don't be so hard on yourself. No! You are not getting it! My mom is right here, with me, right in this room, right now! The hair on the back of my neck stood up immediately. What is she saying? Molly said in a panicked voice. What? What are you saying, Joanna? Your mother's dead. How can she be in that room with you? Oh my god! Can't you see her? She's right behind me! Joanna's eyes widened as she kept on making such bizarre claims like a lunatic. Joe, please stop behaving nobody. like this. You're scaring us, Molly said in a sobbing voice. <laughs> now I get it. You can't see her because of the darkness in my room. Wait, let me show you guys. Joanna stood up and lit a candle. She then placed the candle right next to the bed on a wooden table. What I saw gave me goosebumps. A woman was lying on the bed, facing her back to the camera. Joanna got up holding the tablet in her hand. She then said in a spine-chilling voice, Mama? Mama, look! Molly and Ivy are here. They want to talk to you, Mama. She then looked at the camera once again and said, I'm turning on the back camera so you guys can see her face. You guys will realize how peacefully she's sleeping here. Oh my god. What in the hell is she doing, Ivy? Molly screamed in terror. I was speechless because I didn't know what to say. There was indeed a woman lying on the bed. As soon as Joanna turned on the back camera, we realized that a living nightmare oh! can't be. There was a corpse lying on the bed. Maggots were crawling on its face. The eyes were hanging on the cheeks. It was evident that this is a dead woman's corpse that had just started to rot horrifyingly. Molly screamed and fainted on the ground. Joanna kept laughing like a maniac. I could hear her saying, Look, Mama. Look, my friends are here to see you. They weren't believing me when I told you you were here with me. But now look at their faces. <laughs> oh. Joanna now is in a mental institution. I called the cops and her neighbor, Mr. Cromwell. We came to know that Joanna stole her mother's corpse from the hospital morgue and brought it home. The fact of losing her mother hit her hard. Molly and I are going to go visit her tomorrow. It's just terrifying to see what grief and loneliness can do to people. you earlier, I would like to take your application forward through an interview. I will take your interview tomorrow at 4 p.m. I will mail you a Zoom call link with a passkey. See you tomorrow. Regards, Mr. John Cooper. Okay. I called my friend immediately and said everything about this interview schedule. I asked him for some leads as to what kind of man Mr. Cooper is. My friend said that he was a very organized person. He lives with his wife. He's a reserved man, hence there are high chances of the interview being very precise and to the point. I was kind of relieved hearing that, because the bigger the interview will be, the more difficult it'll get. The next day, I woke up early to finish my household chores. I wanted to be completely free for the evening, hence I did everything in advance. At around 3.30pm, I received the link of a Zoom call from Mr. Cooper. He instructed me to join the call at 4pm sharp. Right at 4 p.m., I opened the last mail to join the link, just when my doorbell rang. 
I wanted to be on time, but unfortunately, my next door neighbor, Miss Lucy, came to drop by some apple pie she made. Apple pie I had is to the talk best to her pie. For some time, Hands and when down. I came back, it was 4 15. Hands down. I joined the Zoom call link immediately, and a screen flashed on my computer. I saw Mr. Cooper was already waiting for me on the call. I expected that, but I didn't see him at first. It was just an empty room. I couldn't help but notice how messy that room was. I remember my friend telling me Mr. Cooper is an organized guy. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I was waiting for him to come in front of the screen. I could see the entire room. The room is probably upstairs, as I could see the room door open and stairs going down from it. I was thinking, where did he go? When suddenly, I saw someone coming upstairs. Finally, he's coming. An average height man entered the room. He had messy hair and was dressed very casually. Mr. Cooper, I'm sorry I was late. As soon as I said that, Mr. Cooper looked at the screen and got shocked to see me, as if he was not at all expecting me. He stared at the screen for a second and then looked around the room. I again said, Um, sir, I'm excited to meet you. I was waiting for this interview for a long time. I can't thank you enough for accepting my application at this time. He smiled awkwardly and sat in front of the computer screen. I smiled back and waited for him to start the interview. Okay, so let's start by introducing yourself. Tell me something about yourself. Yes, sir. My name's Andrew Charles. I did studies from... I went on talking about my work experience and explaining my skills, but the more I kept talking, I could see Mr. Cooper getting distracted. His eyes were constantly moving. Sometimes he even turned back and looked behind him, as if he was searching for something. I won't lie, seeing him so aloof made me thought I was making him bored, and that he wasn't interested in my application anymore. That's all about myself, sir, I said, to draw his attention back to the interview. Oh, right. Impressive, Andrew. The thing is, I have a few issues to deal with. My wife is not feeling well today. I have to take care of her, so if you don't mind, can we please reschedule this interview for another time? I was thinking, such a nice guy. Even after his wife is sick, he attended the Zoom call. I was about to tell him that it's alright and we can continue the interview yeah, some yeah. other time, just when I received an email. I wouldn't have checked it right then if the sender's email ID didn't read cooperjohn at gmail.com. I got a bit surprised because Mr. Cooper was talking to me. Then how come he mailed me right now? But as I opened That's the mail, him. my stomach dropped. My heart stopped for a second. The mail read, This is Allison Cooper, John's wife. Please don't disconnect the call. The man in the call is not my husband. He is an intruder. He murdered my husband and is now planning to murder me. I've called 911. You have to keep him busy in the call until they arrive. Once he disconnects the call, he will come for me. I'm hiding in the closet. Please, for God's sake, don't disconnect the call. Bro. I looked at the camera. The man pretending to take my interview for the last 15 minutes is a cold-blooded murderer. He was still talking like he was the real Mr. Cooper. So, Andrew, it was nice talking to you. I didn't let him finish and responded. Sir, if you don't mind me asking... What happened to your wife? The man got startled with my random curiosity I know and he fumbled. Did. Um, well, she was feeling sick since this morning. I think she has a fever. I should go take care of her. Sir, is the fever occurring in intervals? I mean, you know there's a pandemic going on. You two should be careful. Yeah, I know. Thanks for your concern. I better go now. Sir! Sir, if you could tell me when you're planning to reschedule the interview, it'll be good for me to prepare for it. I could tell he was getting irritated now. Well, I'll let you know. I will text you the day and time of the interview soon. But sir, you don't even have my number. Why not give me your number so I can drop you a message for you to contact me back? Please tell me. I'm telling you my wife is sick, and all you care about is an interview? I knew I wouldn't be able to hold this man for longer now. I was praying to God that please make the cops come soon. But he suddenly looked back. There was a closet on the other side of the room. He rushed towards the closet and opened the door in one go. 
I see what's going on here. You're trying to tangle me in your gibberish so that you can help her escape, huh? Mrs. Cooper screamed at the top of her lungs. No. Don't you dare hurt her, you freak! I no, screamed. No, don't kill killer. What? What will you do, Andrew? Will you crawl into this room through the Zoom call to save her? Huh? <laughs> no, don't. You sick psycho. Don't kill her. You Please don't kill her. Not the lady. Immediately. Not the lady. <laughs> you can't save her, Andrew. Now. You'll watch her die. No! 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 No, not the lady. No! No, stop! Priest, police, leave the lady or we will shoot you right now. Yeah. The yeah! My boy! Him. He gave me one My last boy! ferocious look before the cops took him downstairs. Mrs. Cooper told them everything about the killer and how I helped in saving her life. I'm glad that even though I was sitting in some other corner of the world, but I could the reach out to dead. help someone. I still can't imagine what would have happened if I ignored the mail and disconnected the Zoom call without reading it at that moment. Clap it up! She didn't die! I'm already the new kid here, hence you can understand my condition in the school. I'm studying in the ninth standard, and I barely made any friends so far. But I have my best friend, Matt. He lives in the city. We often talk to each other. Sometimes when I get off, I Zoom call him to video chat for a while. One day, nah, my mom nah, came nah, to nah, pick nah. me up from far. But... Bro, your feet! <laughs> His feet look like a hockey stick. <laughs> Where <Well>, your neck? <laughs> I texted Matt asking if he is free to play some video games and hang out in the Zoom call. He immediately agreed. I got home and went to take a shower. I freshened up and contacted Matt in a Zoom call. Hey, new kid, what's up? Matt said in a mocking tone. Oh, come on. You don't call me that at least. I said in an irritated tone. We started to make fun of each other and talk about our life. I told him how much I missed the city and that I was planning to fly out there soon with my parents for the holidays. Matt was pretty happy when I told him this. We played video games for an hour. Matt had to finish his homework, so he waved me goodbye and I disconnected from the chat computer screen. I couldn't guess what was happening. And then suddenly, the screen blacked out and again turned on. I saw that the Zoom call somehow got connected to a stranger. It was shocking to see that because without a link and pass key, it's quite impossible to join a random Zoom chat. I honestly don't know how that happened. Hello? Is someone there? I asked. Please, help me. A girl replied in a low voice. It felt like she was intentionally speaking in a low voice. Her camera was turned off so all I could see was the black screen. I asked again. Who are you? Please, please help me. There's a man inside of my house. What? What do you mean? I saw the man entering my house with a sharp knife. You have to call the cops. But why aren't you calling the cops? I left my phone downstairs and I'm talking to you through my iPad. I I'm hiding in the closet in my room upstairs. I got connected to the Zoom call somehow. Please, you're my only hope. Help me. What's your name? My name's Candace. Please, you have to help me. Bro, why are you asking oh, okay. questions? Call I'll, I'll call the cops for you, but this isn't a prank, right? No. Please, I can hear the man's footsteps on the stairs. He'll kill me. Call the cops now. Please, don't disconnect this call. Okay, I'm calling the cops now. What's your address? I couldn't catch a break to panic about this sudden situation. I was feeling blank about whatever was happening then. I saw the girl typing the address in the chat box. I already dialed the number 911 and was waiting for her to finish typing so that I could make the call. For some reason, I knew that this couldn't be a sick joke because I could hear the girl's panicked breathing. I even realized the man might have entered her room, which is why she probably stopped talking. 
She finished typing, and as I saw the address, my heart stopped. The girl had typed my address. What the hell? I froze in front of the computer. The girl kept sending a text in the chat box. Help me. Call the cops. Help. I slowly turned my head towards my closet. Drops of sweat appeared on my forehead. I got up and started to walk towards the closet with stumbling steps. As I walked, my foot made a muffled creaking sound on the floor. Right then, I heard the girl whispering in a freaked out voice. He's in my room. I was paranoid. I didn't know what I would see when I opened the closet door. Each second felt like a needle piercing at my neck. I stopped in front of the closet door. With a trembling hand, I grasped the doorknob and bolted it open in one go. No one was inside. The closet was empty. But I couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched by an invisible girl who just talked to me and claimed to hide inside my closet. When I looked back at my computer screen, I saw the girl had disconnected from the chat. I immediately rushed downstairs, as I couldn't stand in my room for a single second more. I called my parents right away, and they came back within an hour. I was shivering, sitting in the corner of our living room. I told everything to my parents, and my mom was freaked out, but my dad laughed it away. He said I must have dozed off and seen a weird dream, and that this was all my imagination. But that girl's scared voice still echoes in my ear. The next morning, my dad asked the local sheriff about our house, and what we discovered shook us badly. Before us, there lived a family in this house, a man with his wife and daughter. One day, the man went out with his wife, leaving their daughter home alone. Unfortunately, someone broke in and robbed the house. That guy accidentally found out about the daughter hiding in her room closet. In fear of getting caught, he killed the girl. When the man and woman came back, they found the house in a complete mess, and they found the daughter lying dead in her closet. She was stabbed multiple times by a sharp object. We're still living in this house. At night, I wake up thinking the girl's spirit might be trapped inside my closet and watching me as I sleep. Oh, heck no. Hope you guys enjoy this. If you have, leave a like, subscribe. If you are new to the channel, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace!